Can you please explain how one can make a smooth and fast transition from Christianity to paganism, especially when you're just at the beginning of your journey? Since exiting Christianity is not simply about returning all your icons back to the church's gift shop, but about changing the worldview, which happens through awareness. And becoming aware, as we know, it is a long and painstaking process. The connection to one's own God is not fully developed yet. The experience is lacking. And the surrounding environment puts its pressure on you, especially if you are doing this on your own. What sort of specifics of Christianity and its methods should be taken into account? What other tools, aside from reading primary sources and calling upon Earth, can be used to immerse deeper into the desired worldview, anchor the results, and speed up the overall process? I'm interested in the Greek tradition. This is a great question, thank you. It is really important, and you very wisely pointed out that it is not enough to just ritually bring all that stuff back to where you got it from. Of course not. Of course this isn't enough. As Anton Chekhov once said, I must squeeze the slave out of myself drop by drop. And this is what everyone who has decided to leave Abrahamic religions in any of their form and manifestation and transition to a pagan worldview, a pagan understanding of the world, has to do. The first thing that needs to be done, as you said, is understanding that it is not a simple ritual, that it is a worldview that will leave its trace on absolutely everything. If a person who has been long justifying his bad deeds by always being able to erase her transgressions through the act of repentance, suddenly decides to leave the system that provided her with this service, she must remember that the system most likely will return back to her everything that it has been collecting on her behalf. Meaning that all your bad deeds will become your property and you will have to deal with them independently. And this is something that very few actually understand, hence perceiving all incoming misfortunes and problems as a punishment or even worse. And absolutely not noticing the fact that they are just getting back what's theirs. It would be impossible to lead a despicable life forever to have a despicable mindset and not to pay for it eventually. The same Christian egregor will eventually present you with a bill, even if it happens at the end of your life. But when you exit and do it so demonstratively, be ready to settle your dues. We already spoke about it many times in each of our lessons and magic Q&As available on YouTube. The level of responsibility must be very high here because you should be coming to other gods with a whole another kind of consciousness. Your foundations should be synchronized with theirs. If they said not to lie, then this must be a life's norm within your consciousness. If they said to be strong, then this must be a life's norm within your consciousness. The things your gods have spoken of are the things your whole life too should be about. Now what should you do? If the decision is conscious and it has been made and you are aware of all the consequences that may arise, simply saying to yourself, I'm out, isn't enough. Just as it wouldn't be enough to just bring back all the paraphernalia. Intention is a good thing, but this intention should also be put into action. And here, I am afraid that you can't avoid some serious and painstaking labor, maybe even help from certain forces that possess functional exit algorithms. 
You probably will need that too. And why this? Because the upload of the basic matrix of any Abrahamic religion, whether Judaism, Christianity or Islam, what in essence is one and the same thing, is based upon placing a particular primary matrix containing certain principles over one's buddhic body. These principles function as a constant within the consciousness. And everything else is derivative of these constants. You can clean out the derivatives as much as you wish, but without actually ripping out these constants out of the consciousness, there is nothing you will be able to do about this stuff. The constants will produce tens of thousands other derivatives, and that's all you will be doing, cleaning out the effects of being exposed to this matrix. It is the constants themselves that have to be erased, and these constants need to be recognized. So how can you recognize them? For this, my friends, you all have a skill that the state has offered to all those who were born and living in it. It is called universal literacy. You're literate, so read books. And start precisely with the primary sources, with the very same biblical stories. You just have to read them in the right way. And in order to do that, you have to ask yourself the following question. Where has this been copied from? Find the primary sources where all of this has been copied from. You will have to read history, including archaeological history. You have to read a lot of literature related to the Jewish folk, as well as to the development of Judaism, the development of Christianity and the development of Islam. Discover who came before them, who laid the foundation for their religion. Reach out to the Sumerians, reach out to the Sumerian and Zoroastrian system, their civilizational system, and understand where they actually got all these constants from. And only once you will be able to see all of this, the recognition of the constants within your consciousness will be easier. But becoming aware of a constant is only half of the work. It is also necessary to see the reason why these constants are encoded in everybody's consciousness, even in a person that has no blood relation to the Mesopotamian root and other roots alike. And still they are hammered into everyone, as they really are hammered into everyone. A baby is baptized and immediately the matrix is uploaded. And the sooner it is uploaded, the harder it is to recognize it. And it works either way. Even if the person considers herself as an atheist, she would still behave as it is dictated by this system. And this whole system says that human baseness is not a sin. It's a circumstance. And if the circumstances have turned out to be a certain way, then you may act despicably. And as long as this helplessness before circumstances, before the divine will, is present within your consciousness, you can consider yourself a carrier of this matrix. Whereas as soon as you understand that you don't give a damn about the circumstances, including about the opinion of those around you regarding these circumstances, and that you yourself can create the circumstances you need, this will be an indicator that this matrix, if it is not gone already, then got thinned out to an extent of becoming so insignificant that its extraction is not only extremely easy, but you can even simply ignore it and start living according to completely different rules. Since you have found yourself in these circumstances, since you were born into a situation or even into a family where they started to hammer all these dogmas into you from the very birth, it means that there was a reason for it. Don't think that it's all without a reason. Most probably you have departed from your past life according to the Christian ritual. So nothing different could have happened to you now. But it can become different if you will become aware of everything in the right way. And you, colleague, judging by your question, have a very right understanding of all of it. Performing the ritual is not enough. It must be done in action. This must be done for your own self, as an announcement, as a one-way ticket, that you will not go back, that you have made the decision. But this is not enough. You have to dig out all these resistant constructs, and not any longer just out of your mental body. 
but also out of your convictions. Read all these commandments, all these rules that were actually dictated not for you, because our gods taught us slightly different things. And understand that you cannot act that way. You can't. And by studying your own pantheon, the one your heart is drawn to, you will ask yourself the question, how would my God act in such a case, in such a situation, if he happened to find himself in this story? How would the heroes of the epos that warms my heart have acted? What have been an indicator of righteousness, goodness, valor and honor? What do they praise? What do they honor? And see the difference. And as soon as you will see the difference, you will surely be able to tell, this here, along with the betrayal of your woman, is something bad. And this here is something good. An amazing transformation will happen to your consciousness. What initially was recorded as being good will be transferred to the proto-foundation evil and will stay there. And there shall it remain. And you will act in every situation exactly the same way. It is a long and painstaking work. But sooner or later it will eventually bring you to a result. You will at least get to know yourself better. By studying myths and legends this way, and by trying on these clothes, you will understand why we are living in the world that we do. And once you have understood this, you might as well start thinking about what needs to be done in order to change all of this. And once thinking and understanding, you might find the strength within you, or find like-minded people, and find the strength together to accomplish what you have planned. I very much wish that for you.